Hello everyone. Good evening. Hi, sir. Good evening. 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 Okay, uh, guys, to, to avoid micro noises, I'm going to keep everyone in mute. Is that fine? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I have doubt, sir. What? I have one doubt. How oh, many doubts? Every all doubts will be clarified at the end of class. Is that fine? After hundred time, when you clarify the time, sir. When you clarify the time, sir. At the at the end of class. Okay, okay, sir. Thank you. Sure, sure, sure. Okay. Thank you. So let's start our class. <clears throat> Welcome to DevOps course. Myself, Sai. Uh, I'll be your DevOps faculty. Okay. You can call me Sai. Before we start our class, let me introduce myself. That is why you should learn DevOps from me. See, guys, I'm a senior DevOps engineer, senior AWS Cloud architect, as well as senior Python developer, having good years of IT experience. Uh, here at Sidem, I teach all three technologies, AWS, DevOps, Python. You know, right, these three are three different technologies. Here at Sidem, I teach all three technologies. Okay. Yeah. I'm recording this session. This session is a recorded one, and I'm going to share this one to every one of you. Okay. Uh, I have cleared all three certifications in AWS. In AWS, we have certifications. I have cleared all. I'm a certified trainer. I have cleared all certifications. In DevOps, we don't have any certifications. In DevOps, that part, anyways, I'll explain later on. Okay. I'm a corporate trainer too. I provide training to employees also in companies. Corporate training means providing training to employees. And uh, I'm an official recruiter of my company. I take interviews for DevOps, AWS, Python, and Linux also. Uh, earlier, I used to teach Linux also, but nowadays I'm not teaching Linux. I'm teaching only DevOps, AWS, and Python. But I take interviews for Linux also. So whenever any recruitment is there, you know, uh, that time I'm an official recruiter of my company. I take interviews for all four technologies. Okay. So whenever we conduct any drive in my company or my known companies, generally I refer my students only. That means you guys. So job support will be there. And I have good teaching experience. I have taught many students across the globe. And these are the projects in which I have worked on, like Amazon, IBM, Barclays, Clara Bridge, AT&T, BT, Wells Fargo, HABC, and InfoStretch. Okay, these are the projects in which I worked on. So this is a quick introduction about myself. I hope you understood my background, right, everyone? Uh, before we start our class, let me explain some important points that you must know, okay? See guys, every day our class times are from 9.30 to 10.30 p.m. These are regular class times, 9.30 to 10.30. Uh, but since today is demo, today I'm going to take till 11 p.m. Half an hour more, okay? Uh, out of our entire course duration, I can say that this is the most important class because today you will get to know what is DevOps, why we should learn DevOps, why it became so popular. All these things you are going to understand today. So today is the most important class. So today, that's why I'm going to take 11 p.m. till 11 p.m., half an hour more. Please bear with me. Regular classes will stick to our timing, 9.30 to 10.30. Got it? Yeah. 
hopefully by the end of this class all your doubts would be clarified automatically but still if you get any doubt in between uh, you just make a note of all those doubts so that at the end of class i'll give sufficient time so that you can ask your doubts okay so my request is don't ask anything when class is going on and don't type anything in this chat board okay because you know uh, it it might create disturbance to others and you might miss some important points okay so i just first focus on my demo class all doubts will be clarified at the end of class okay without clarifying your doubts i will not close my section that is my promise got it okay so no devops you can't survive in it industry if you don't learn devops survival would be very very difficult why because see devops in it is considered as an all rounder all rounder i'll tell you earlier in companies we used to maintain separate teams like build team build team qa teams deployment teams monitoring teams maintenance we used to recruit different different teams but nowadays we are not doing that instead of recruiting those teams we are recruiting only one team devops okay so earlier we used to recruit those many guys but nowadays one devops engineer can do all those tasks okay that's why devops engineer is considered as a all rounder suppose if you take a example of cricket team if you are an all rounder like you can bat well you can do bowling you can do wicket keeping you are good fielder then you will be given priority correct or not he is also same thing devops engineer is an all rounder okay so that's why every company is looking for this particular all rounder so that's why if you don't learn devops survival will be very very difficult you will understand by the end of demo why it is it is must and should for freshers especially yes we do have openings for freshers yeah many companies are going for campus recruitments we do have good openings for freshers okay companies are recruiting freshers okay so you should not have any doubt in that got it we do have openings for freshers okay no need priority experience to learn devops you need not have any priority experience because this is a kind of new technology emerging technology that's why no one is expecting you to have any priority experience okay no need to learn linux or any other tool see to learn devops linux is mandatory mandatory you have to learn without linux knowledge you can't even touch devops you can't even touch but why i mentioned you need not have any linux knowledge that means linux i am going to teach here itself i'll tell you in this course first i am going to cover aws then i am going to cover linux then only we are going to learn devops first aws then linux then devops i'll tell you why it is so in devops we are going to learn many devops tools devops is a group of tools group of tools so or like many tools we are going to learn like docker jenkins ansible git many many tools are there all those tools we are going to install on linux server on linux because majority of these tools they support linux only not windows some tools support windows also those we are going to see in windows also but most of the tools they support linux that's why before you learn devops you must know linux for that we need linux server all those servers we are going to take from aws cloud that means our underlying platform would be aws from aws we are going to launch linux servers linux servers in those servers we are going to install devops tools that is how it is so first we are going to cover aws then linux then only devops in interviews also they are asking questions in the same manner in real time also we work in the same manner got it that is how we are going to learn so before you come to my class you need not have any aws or linux knowledge because those i am going to cover here itself as a part of this course got it so that's why i mentioned no need to have any linux or any other tools and no need to have any programming language background see many student they have these questions i we don't have any programming skills can we learn devops or yes guys without having any programming skills happily you can learn devops here we are not going to use any programming language okay no that may big headache is over right okay so no need any programming language because we are not using as simple as that okay again i am not against any programming language here i teach python also as a separate course but in devops no need means no need it should be crystal clear okay so i want you to focus on these three points no need priority experience no need to have linux or any other tool no need to have any programming language. that means anyone can learn devops 
even eighth standard student also can learn it is the most easiest technology and it is the most demanding technology got it so that's why more job openings job openings are fresher and experience because every company is looking for these devops engineers from startups till mnc's so all those companies need you guys who are having good knowledge that's why we have more job openings and each you know why we have more recruit opportunities because this technology is being used by each and every company across the globe that's why we have more abroad opportunities i hope you understood right uh, yeah as i said i am a certified trainer these are my certifications aws certifications in devops we don't have any certifications in devops that part i am going to explain later on why why it is so okay a little bit we'll talk about salaries little bit see here it is pretty uh, you know obvious that since you are an all rounder that's why your package structure is bit high compared to other technologies i'll tell you generally in india a package structure is something like this you know experience into 2 lakhs you take any technology you take any technology experience into 2 lakhs a fresher gets average of 3.2 lakhs that's a package structure on an average suppose you have 2 years experience 2 into 2 you are eligible to get 4 lakhs if you have 3 years experience 3 into 2 6 lakhs if you have 4 years 4 into 2 8 lakhs that is a package structure that generally you get in india but that is not the case with devops why because you are going to be an all rounder so earlier you know companies used to to 10 members but instead of 10 members one devops need can do all those tasks by using automation so companies they are recruiting one devops engineer instead of recruiting 10 other members so even if we get five members only that is pretty huge correct or not that's why devops engineers are getting highest packages okay so here a fresher average salary is 6 lakhs minimum minimum here okay minimum starting itself an experienced candidate you can see 2 to 3 8 to 12 3 to 4 12 to 16 very few technologies in this world they get this kind of packages very few you can count in a fingertips in the devops is okay 4 to 5 16 to 20 5 to 6 20 to 24 6 to 7 24 28 more than 8 more than 32 experience into 4 lakhs okay if you have 3 years 3 into 4 12 4 4 into 4 16 you can search in google you will get you can search devops will be there or one in top 5 for sure okay so guys this is for everyone it freshers it non it let me show you anyways freshers you come under this category freshers you come under this category correct working it employees you come under this category because see suppose you are in working it employee uh, means you, you have technology with you could be any technology java php python system admin tester support engineer middleware could be any okay so let's take java you have four years experience in java what we do we are going to add devops to that that is so we are going to mention so we are going to mention like we have four years experience in both java and devops that is so we are going to mention java and devops so that's why you come under this category let you have any technology with you we are going to add devops to that okay come into non it if you are in non it means we you don't have any technology with you correct so what you have four years of gap after graduation four years of either non it experience or gap that four years we are going to mention as devops devops experience i'm taking four you could have six seven any number so that i'll tell you how to mention and all okay that's how we are going to mention here non it you get two doubts say from where we'll get you know we are filling gap from where we'll get documents pay slips forms extend from where we get all these things that you need not worry i'm here to help you that i'll guide you from where you get you don't even need to worry about them right first doubt clarify second doubt sai can you really compete with the genuine candidates we are keeping four years we are filling gap of four years with devops can we compete with the genuine candidate who is having four years experience or more than five yes you can very well in fact you can perform better than those guys okay you can because in company they use mostly one or two tools two to three tools but here we are going to learn many tools that two with all real time scenarios and all you can perform better than those guys okay trust me that you will understand by the end of this job okay so that's how that's why it is highly recommended for fresher site in non it everyone 
to choose their career into DevOps. Understood? Fine. So with this brief introduction, let's start our class. What is DevOps? Why we should learn DevOps? Why it became so popular? And what we are going to learn in this course? Okay. Let's see all these things one by one. So guys, I hope you understood till here. I mean, I haven't even started my demo. It's just an introduction only. Uh, you understood everyone? Please respond. Yes, sir. Right? Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, fine. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, fine. Yeah. Okay, I will, I will explain that. Yeah. Okay, so let's try to understand what is DevOps. Let me start with simple example. You can see here organization needs, organization needs. Suppose you want to establish one organization, any business, hotel, shop, or any IT company. Suppose you want to establish one IT company. Your aim would be to bring that one to number one position. Everyone think in the same manner, right? Okay, everyone wants to bring their business to number one position and everyone work for that. So if you really want to bring your organization to number one position, there are so many guidelines that you need to follow. So many guidelines. So what are those? These are the guidelines. The first one is faster delivery. Whoever delivers their product into market first, they will grab the whole market. They will capture entire market. Let me give one simple example that is Paytm. You know, right, in India, Paytm became so popular, right? Nowadays, we are getting phone pay, Google Pay, and all those things. But earlier, Paytm became so popular, right? That time also, we had many other applications. But why Paytm only became so popular? Why? Because they introduced this concept first. They launched it first. Okay? So whoever delivers their product into market first, they will capture entire market. That's why faster delivery is very, very important. If you don't launch first, someone else will launch then you will lose your market. Correct or not? That is. Is that only enough? No, quality also plays a crucial role. Okay, in fact, quality comes first, then only faster delivery. Let me give one more example. Orkut. Orkut. Guys, I kept everyone in mute. But when I ask any question, that time I'll unmute you. That time you can respond to my questions. Okay, so my question to you is, have you heard Orkut anyone? Yes, sir. Anyone? Have you heard? Yes, sir. How yes, sir. You, how many of you used this one? Yes, we used. You used I one. use, I sir. What is this? Yeah. Tell me. Uh, sir, yeah. it's, it's a like social a website. Yeah, right, right. It's like a Facebook. Yes, absolutely right. Okay, let me tell. Let me explain. As uh, some of you rightly said, it's a kind of Facebook. Earlier, we used to use Orkut earlier. But nowadays, we are using Facebook. Okay. Uh, see, faster delivery goes to Orkut. Correct or not? Earlier, we used to use Orkut before Facebook. Long back, right? But now people started using Facebook. Why it is so? Faster delivery goes to Orkut, right? But why people switch it to Facebook? Because Orkut, they did not maintain the quality. But Facebook, they maintained quality. They added more user-friendly options. They made more user-friendly. That's why people switch it to Facebook. Correct? They switch it to Facebook. So here, quality comes first, then only faster delivery. If you don't maintain the quality, then there is no meaning for the faster delivery. Okay. That's a quality plays a question. See, whatever you, you product you want to buy, you look for the quality, correct or not? That is important. And nowadays, some people think that, you know, quality is missing in Paytm. That's the reason people are using phone pay and Google Pay. Correct? That's it. And third one, see, now Orkut is not there. They shut down their company itself. Now it is not there. Okay. Third one, lesser spending. Lesser spending. See, uh, yeah, you can see. There's a water bottle in front of me, right? Assume that the cost of this bottle is 100 rupees. Assume. Cost is 100 rupees. But to buy this product, I'm spending 1 lakh. To buy this, I'm spending 1 lakh. That means unless I'm wasting a lot of money. Correct or not? If I waste this, this much of money, how can I generate profits? So here, what I'm trying to say is, don't waste your money. Try to reduce your expenditure as low as possible. But there should not be any compromise on these two. While maintaining these two, try to reduce your expenditure as low as possible. And the fourth one is always available. 
See, uh, suppose you establish one hotel, make sure that that should be open to your customers always. Okay, you are running one business that should be open to customers always. You are running one website that should be reachable to customers always. There should not be any customer dissatisfaction. Customer should not go with empty hands. That is very very important. Okay, always it should be available to customers. Right. So these are some guidelines. If you follow these guidelines, definitely you can bring your organization to number one position. Now you might be thinking, Sai, why are we discussing all these things? How they are? These are related to our DevOps. These are related to our DevOps. That's why I'm going to explain now. So I hope you can see my white screen, right? Okay. Yeah. Now <clears throat> let me start with one simple example. <coughs> You know, right? IRCTC, correct? You know, IRCTC. This is Indian Railway website, correct? By using which we can book train tickets through online. You know, right? Earlier, this application was not there, right? You remember, we used to go to reservation counters, we used to stand in queues, we used to, you know, face so many problems. But with the help of this website, or you can call application, we can book train tickets through online. So by sitting here itself, I can book tickets. By sitting here itself, I can pay money. And by sitting here itself, I can get print out of this ticket. Right? This application made our lives easy. Okay. Yeah. Assume that we don't have this application as of now. Just assume. Suddenly, one railway minister, he got an idea. Hey, why can't we create this kind of application so that my citizens of India, they can book tickets through online. So he got an idea. He got an idea that is fine, but can he create that application? No, he can't. He can't because he's, he's a politician. Right? Okay. He's not good at technology. He's good at politics. He's not good at technology. That's why he's going to contact one IT company. Assume that he's an IT manager. He will inform to IT manager. Hey, IT manager, I want this application. You create that application and give it to me. I'll give money to you. Simple business you like. You create application, give it to me. I'll give money to you. That's a simple business. Deal. So this IT manager, he's having these technical steps. You can see. Who are good at all technologies. Correct or not. Who are capable enough to create that application. Right. So fine. This IT manager will inform to railway minister. Hey, railway minister. I will create that application, but please wait for one year. Yeah, obviously to create that application, it takes time, right? Fine. Now in this deal, business deal, this railway ministry is giving one task to IT manager. What is the task? The task we call IRCTC, correct? So here that task we call as project. That task we call as project. Now who is giving this project? I, who is giving this project? Railway minister? That person we call as client. Whoever gives this project, that person we call as client. Wherever client sits, that location we call on site. Wherever we, you guys, we are working, we sit, that location we call either off site or offshore. Off site or you can call offshore. Once this project is over, this project is over. This railway ministry is going to pay money to IT manager. That money will be distributed to us in the form of salaries or packages. Correct or not? That means who is paying our salaries? Company or client? Client is paying our salaries. Client is paying our salaries, not company. Remember that. Okay. That's why if you are not in any project, that means you don't have any client. Right? You don't have any client. So company will wait for two to three months, then it will file. Okay. That's it. Okay, so uh, assume that we all working in this project, you guys and me, we all working together. Okay, so now we need to start creating that application, right? So first comes developers. Developers, they start writing the code. They start writing the code. Uh, observe, if you observe carefully, if you take this IRCTC, type here, IRCTC.co.in. You can see this is a website and you can see so many options, right? You can see when I click on buses, right click open, you can see it's a new page. It is taking me to some other page, right? 
Suppose when I click on flights, see, it will take me to some other page. Say this is buses, this is flights. That means when I click on any option, it will take me to some other page. Okay. When you type ARCTC, what you can see, this is what we call home page, home page. So these pages we call web pages. Each and every option is associated with one web page backend. In fact, this backend page is also, you can see when I click option, any one, it will take me to one more page. That means each and every option is backend linked with one web page. So like this, we have hundreds of web pages are there, group put together that we call website or web application. So group of all these web pages we call website or web application. Okay. In that, out of all those web pages, when you type IRCTC, the first word you can see, this is what we call home page, home page. So developers, they have to write code to create each web page to design. So you can see in every web page, you can see different options, different colors, images, fonts, correct or not? So developers, they have to write code to create each web page, hundreds of web pages. That means they have to write lakhs of lines of code, lakhs of lines of code. Okay, they are writing the code. They might be using their own language like Java, PHP, Python. That's up to them. Okay. <clears throat> they have written a lot of code. After writing code, then we have to build. Build. Build means converting that entire source code into any installable application. That means, see, when you download Google Chrome, are you getting the source code? given by Google developers? No, you are getting one .exe file that you can able to install in your laptops, right? So converting entire source code into any installable application. Okay, that is what we call build, the .exe, .var, .jar, that you can able to install. That is what we call build. Okay, build is over. Then after that, we need to test also. Whether that application is working fine or not. See, even though after entering right password, it is showing me that, hey, you enter wrong password. That is one error. Okay, I'm selecting AC, but it is taking sleeper. That is one error. I'm giving my age as uh, no, 28. It is taking taking as 68. That is one error. Okay, so these are the errors. So all these errors we need to troubleshoot. Got it? Okay, we addressed all these issues. Then finally, QA. Also we call quality assurance, quality assurance. So here we check for the quality. Quality is very, very important. This quality was missing in our code. That's why people switch it to Facebook, right? So quality plays a crucial role. Here at quality assurance, mainly we look for three things. The first one is whether this website is user-friendly or not, attractive or not, whether my customers, they are understanding all these options or not. That we verify here. Okay, that what can be verified, that is fine. Second thing, whether developers, they follow best practices or not while writing code, whether they follow best practices or not, standard procedure. Third one, whether this website is secure or not, hackers, virus, because tomorrow you are going to enter your payment card details and not to book ticket. So it should be secure enough, right? Correct or not? So all these things we verified quality assurance. We verified. Okay, fine. We verified everything is fine. That's it, guys. What else we can do? That much only, right? So that means here by the end of this stage, I can say, can I say my project is over? No. Product is ready. Product means what is that? IRCTC. That's end product, right? Either you can call website or application or end product. That is what we are going to deliver to our client. Correct. And IRCTC is ready. Then here comes our deployment team. Deploy. Deployment team means, you know, all administrators, system admin, network admin, database administrators. This deployment team, they take this product they go to on-site. For what? Deployment. See, railway ministry is there means he has his own employees, correct? He has his own servers, railway servers we call, correct? These are railway servers. Okay. So this deployment team, they take this product, they go to on-site for deployment. Guys, deployment also we can call install. In a simple English, install. Install, you know, right? You know, every day you install many applications from your Play Store or Apple Store, correct? Into your phone. That is also we can call deploy. Officially, we call deploy. In a simple terms, we can call install. So this deployment team, they take this product, they go to on-site. Okay. So for what? For installing the product in railway servers. They went there and they installed, they come back. No. 
because see railway employees they don't know anything about that application for them that is pretty new they don't know how to book train ticket they don't know how to take the print out they don't know how to you know postpone the journey they don't know anything about that application we know everything because we created that so that's why we provide training to them we provide you know user manual and all we maintain those servers for next couple of years see here maintenance monitoring all these things maintenance what we monitor for at least to next for a couple of months whether everything is working fine or not right so all those things we verify and now yeah we we maintained we monitored we have given training to them everything is working fine now railway employees got familiarity with the usage of that application now they are booking tickets by themselves now all citizens of my india they are booking tickets through online no complaints nothing everything is running smoothly without any complaints okay now here at this stage i can say my project is over here i can say my project is over got it now what actually happens client will give party then you will be placed in one more project assume that your next project is you need to create whatsapp application so developer they write the code build test qa deployment as well next project you need to create facebook application development build test qa deployment as well so you need to create a zoom application the one which you use to join this class for that also development build test qa deployment as well so you take any project any application in this world these stages are common so group of all these stages combined we call life cycle life cycle you know right human life cycle childhood stage adult stage old stage you know group of these stages we call human life cycle these stages are common for each and every human being on the planet whether he could be richest person or poorest person whether he could be a president of any country or normal citizen these stages are common to each and every person on the planet that is what we call human life cycle so here group of all these stages we call sdlc software development life cycle group of all these stages we call software development life cycle so while developing any software this life cycle is common group of stages okay for now observe carefully guys what is this team this team we call as development team correct why are we calling this one as a development team because they are involved in developing one product correct or not see at the end of this stage they have developed one product correct or not that's why we call this one as a development team right then what is this team is it a development team no it is operations this we call operations why are we calling this as an operations are they involved in developing any product no they are involved in deploying maintains monitoring this is what we call operations correct or not okay that's why this team we call as operations team now these two team members okay these two team members they are working together to finish this project correct i'm repeating these two team members development team and operations team they are working together to finish this irctc project so while working they are following one standard practice or you can call methodology while working they are following one standard methodology that is what we call as waterfall what for see actually this is a old methodology the here we are facing so many problems in this methodology this official word that they have given waterfall but in a simple english we can call this as step by step we can call it as step by step methodology so here i told you that we are facing so many problems right first we'll try to discuss all those problems then you will understand why they have given that name okay you, because you must know to understand of these are very very important okay so first discuss this problem then you will understand why they have given that name. okay so let's see what are the problems that we are facing in this waterfall methodology the first problem that we are facing is dev versus sops versus ops 
Okay. That means see here. Uh, let me give an example. Suppose you are in somewhere abroad. Abroad. You met with two people. One is from your own country. One is from other country. Okay. So with whom would you like to do friendship at initial stages? You will be willing to do friendship with the person who is from your own country only. Correct or not? Because of language issues, cultural issues, whatever. Right? You won't be willing to do friendship with the person who is from other country. Initial stages only. I'm saying. Okay. So that means we can't expect much friendship between you and the person from other country because you both from two different countries. So here also same thing. Development team is separate. Development team is separate. Operations team is separate. That's why you can't expect much friendship between these two teams. They are not doing friendship. It doesn't mean that they fight with each other. No, that is not the case. I'll tell you what actually happens. Developers they have created this application, right? They handed over that application to operations team for what? For deployment. So while deploying operations team, if they face any problems, straight away they blame development team. Hey, development team, what kind of application you have created? That is not at all working fine in my machines. That's what operations team they blame. But what development team they say? They say that hey, no, 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 problem is, problem is in. See, operations team they are blaming that. Hey, problem is in your product. But development team they are blaming that no no my product is fine problem could be in your machines machine means servers see they are blaming each other problem that could be a small issue but instead of resolving that one they are blaming each other if they sit together if they talk together if they resolve that issue together we don't have any problem but that's not happening over there because these are two different teams okay what is a small issue they are taking a lot of time and it is adversely affecting my faster delivery. Correct or not? It is affecting my business, right? That's the first issue. Second issue is manual. See here, everything we are doing manual. Everything, okay. Manually writing code, manual build, manual test, manual QA, manual deploy, manual maintenance, manual model. But is this error of manual thing? No, it is error of automation. It is an error of automation. Correct. Let me tell you one. Let me give one example. Uh, suppose you met with two people who are preparing water pots. You want to buy hundred water pots. You met with two people who are preparing those pots. One person is preparing those pots by using his hand, traditional method. Another person is preparing those pots by using a tool, a machine. The person who is using his hand to prepare those pots, all hundred pots would be in hundred different different sizes. Correct. You can't expect much quality. And since he is doing a lot of hard work, he takes more time, and he will charge you more because he is doing a lot of hard work. Right? But the person who is using a tool, a machine to prepare those pots, all hundred pots will be in the same sizes. He can expect better quality, and since he is doing less hard work, he will charge less, and he can deliver within less time. So, machine-made things are always perfect compared to hand-made things. Correct or not? See, whatever product you see in front of you. Each and everything is a machine-made thing, correct or not? Each and everything is a machine-made thing, correct or not? Not handmade thing, okay? But everything we are doing manually, that is one more problem, correct? And third problem is step by step. So here everything we are doing step by step model. That means, see, once entire development is over, then only build starts. Once entire build is over, then only test starts. That means until development is over, build team they have to sit idle. Until build is over, they have to sit, test team they have to sit idle. That means one stage is over, then only come in second. Second is over, then only come in third. That means here they are taking a lot of time. Correct or not? Right? Since we are doing everything in a step by step, or you can call stage by stage. That means. Once development is over, then only build starts. Development is over for entire website, then only build starts. Build is over for entire website, then only test starts. So step by step, or we can we are doing stage by stage. Since we are doing everything step by step, that's why we call this one as step by step methodology. Also, we call waterfall because step you know water drop by drop, right? With that name, they kept this one as waterfall. Okay, so in this methodology, we are facing these many problems. Since we are facing these many problems, that means we are not finishing project effectively. 
Correct. If you don't finish project effectively, how can you get more projects? If you can't get more projects, how can you generate more revenue? If you can't generate more revenue, how can you bring your organization to number one position? Correct or not? Correct or not? At the end of the day, I want to bring my organization to number one position. But these are hindrances for my growth, to my organization's growth. So that's why this manager, he thought of addressing all these issues. Right? So let's say how he is going to address all these issues. To address all these issues, to address all these issues, he is going to adopt a new methodology, a new methodology that is what agile. See what are problems that we are facing in waterfall. To address those issues, we are going to adopt a new methodology that is what we call agile. So these are more of official word they have given, but in a simple English we call this as continuous methodology. We call this as continuous method. So what actually we are doing? I'm repeating it. It's very, very important. Whatever problems we are facing in waterfall, those we are addressing by using Ajay. So let's try to understand how we are going to address all these issues one by one. Okay. The first one, Dev versus Ops. To address this issue in companies, nowadays we are you know, conducting meetings. Those you can call sync up meetings or you can call stand-up meetings or you can call scrum meetings. Either you can call sync-up meetings or stand-up meetings or you can call scrum meetings. Okay. So what actually we are doing by conducting these meetings? Every day manager conducts that meeting, maximum for half an hour. In that meeting, everyone has to attend. Every member who is working in this project. Okay. Some companies we call sync up, some companies we call stand up, and some companies we call scrum meetings. You can use any of them. So, okay, assume that I'm manager. Today I'm conducting this meeting. Development team is there, operations team is there. They're sitting in front of me. So everyone has to attend. That is mandatory. Maximum it runs for half an hour every day. In that meeting, I'm going to ask three questions to everyone. Three questions. The first question from first person from development team. Hey, so and so, what you did yesterday? Yesterday means what? Not with respect to your personal lives. Okay, what you did, where you went, whether you met your girlfriend or not. What you did yesterday with respect to this project. Then he will say something. So yesterday I worked on this, you know, uh, login, logout page and all something. Everyone is listening to him. Correct or not? That everyone is understanding what he did. Second question I'm going to ask, what you are planning to do today with respect to this project? Then you'll say something, Sai, we got some errors and all we addressed with respect to payment page and all. So everyone is listening to him, correct or not? That means the status of project is in the knowledge of everyone, right? And third question I'm going to ask, are you facing any problems? Did you struck any way? When I ask this third question, one person from development team, he will raise and say, Sai, we created this product. We handed over to operations team, but they are blaming the problems in my product. Operation stream also here only. One person from this team, they raise and say, Sai, they are blaming the problems in my machines. Okay, observe that these two guys are blaming each other. Now, what I'll say, being a manager, I say that, okay, those who are raising issues, you both sit together, talk together, resolve that issue together, I'm giving one day. Okay, because next day, again, I'll ask all three questions. Hey, what you did yesterday? Yesterday, I gave one task. Did you finish it or not? Correct or not? Okay, so... By using, by conducting these meetings, what we are trying to do, we are creating a friendship environment between these two teams so that every day they meet at least once and they work together to address all issues. They work collaboratively. They sit together, they talk together, they resolve all issues together. Okay, I'm just creating friendship environment between these two teams so that they meet at least once every day. Got it? That's so by conducting these meetings, we are addressing the first issue. Got it? That is over. Now coming to second, manual. See, if you want to eliminate manual process, you have to implement automation. Correct? You have to implement automation. So what we are trying to do here to implement automation, we are, we are implementing automation tools at every stage. At development stage, we are implementing a tool called Git. Git. At build stage, I mean, introducing a tool called Maven. 
at test stage we are introducing a tool called selenium at qa i am introducing a tool called check style and deploy uh, i am introducing tool called ansible here itself we have many tools like you know docker kubernetes okay maintenance or that depends on one company to company what kind of maintenance that they would like to go with whether it is manual automation that's up to that to how frequently they want to go for maintenance that is up to them at monitoring we are introducing tool called cloudwatch okay so if we have class we need class senior correct who can manage the class who can administer the class so here we are introducing tool called jenkins okay see in place of these earlier we used to use older tools like you know many old tools we used to use in place of it earlier we used to use svm we call sub version svm in place of maven we used to use ant earlier in place of selenium we used to use you know junit that became pretty old in place of checkstyle we have many many tools out there jenkins also we have bamboo circle ci team city many old tools in place of ansible we used to use chef puppet they became pretty old no one is using them nowadays in place of cloudwatch we used to use nagios people they literally stopped using these tools because they are pretty old every company is using nowadays these tools these are trending tools in the current market okay so fine so tools are that means they work automatically correct they do work automatically so to address manual manual thing i have implemented automation tools that means i addressed the second issue also right come into third problem what is the third one step by step to address all this issue this step by step this this one what we are doing we are connecting all these tools with jenkins you can see i'm connecting all these tools with jenkins so what actually happens if you connect all these tools with jenkins i'll tell you see developers are there they will write the code see guys developers are there they will be there forever they are responsible to write code manually only there is no automation tool which writes code automatically not invented yet they have to write code manually only okay so after writing code they store that code in git git is what what is git it is just a storage where we store the code that's it so as and when they put the code in git immediately jenkins will pull that code immediately and it will send that one to maven okay for what for automation build build happens automatically once build is over it will take that one it will send that code to selenium for testing automatically within fraction of seconds then jenkins again it will take it will send that one to check style for checking quality then it will deploy in thousands of servers automatically and it will monitor also automatically okay i am repeating so whenever developers put the code in git jenkins will take that code it will send to maven for build then immediately test checking quality deploying monitoring everything happens automatically within fraction of seconds or minutes okay see the kind of words which i am going to use now continuous development continuous building continuous testing continuous you know quality checking continuous deploying and continuous monitoring so everything we are doing continuously correct continuously it is happening continuously once a developers are putting the code once a build is happening once a test is happening it's so continuously happening that's why we call this as continuous methodology you can see continuous methods because we are doing continuously that's why they have given name called agile agile means continuity is there continuous got it so earlier we used to do step by step now we are doing continuous that is that means by linking all these tools we are the third issue also so got it that means see what are problems we used to face in waterfall methodology those we are addressing in agile methodology for this agile methodology for this agile methodology 
we have given a technical name that is called DevOps. The technical name that we have given to Agile methodology, we call DevOps. Some people, they have wrong perception that, you know, um, uh, DevOps is an advanced methodology of Agile. No, we have only two methodologies, Waterfall and Agile. DevOps follows Agile methodology. DevOps follows Agile methodology. Okay. Now, now, you know, the one who learns all these tools, that person we call DevOps engineer. If you learn all these tools, you'll be called as a DevOps engineer. Now, why you are learning all these tools? To automate entire software development lifecycle process within less time with higher quality. So you are going to automate entire SDLC process, okay, with uh, within less time that you can deliver, deploy everything with higher quality. That's why you are learning all these tools. Understanding, right? Okay. So now if someone asks you what is DevOps, so what you are, you have to say that I'll tell you now. DevOps means DevOps means addressing all traditional issues and implementing complete automation in your entire software development life cycle. How? By using these automation tools. I'm repeating as very, very important. DevOps means addressing all traditional issues and implementing complete automation in your entire software development life cycle by using these automation tools. That is what DevOps. Okay, the same thing which I mentioned in my PPT. You can see here, addressing all traditional issues and implementing complete automation in every stage of software development life cycle by using automation tools. That is what we call DevOps. Understood? Now, that's why there, now see here, now there is no development team, there is no operations team. We have only one team called DevOps. That's why by combined these two teams, they kept a name called DevOps. Got it? That is so. So here, that means, uh, see, again, here some problems are there, some exceptions. If you learn all these tools, you'll become an all-rounder. That means you, you can do everything, right? If you learn all these tools, you can do everything by yourself. If you learn all these tools, why you want to work under someone else? You can establish your own company, right? You can do everything, right? But that is not possible. You can't be perfect in each and every tool. Okay, so that's why DevOps units are not expected to be perfect in each and every tool. They are expected to be perfect in one or two tools, but you should have knowledge in all the tools. I'm repeating, you should be perfect in one or two tools, but you should have knowledge in all the tools. Now, being a manager, what I do, I'm going to recruit one one person who is good at one one tool. One is Jenkins, one good at Docker, one good at Ansible, like I'll form DevOps team. So if you face a small issue, you can resolve by yourselves because you have knowledge in the tool. If you face a major issue, anyways, your friend is there who can help you, right? That is how we are building DevOps teams. That is so. Got it? Okay, fine. So assume that this is DevOps team. In that, DevOps engineers will be there. DevOps engineers will be there. And also, see, there are some exceptions to DevOps. What are those exceptions? First one is development. Developers are there. They will be there forever. They are responsible to write the code. You need not to write any code. Okay, developers will be there forever. So developers, they write the code. After that, they store the code in Git. Then onwards, your work starts. DevOps, the place where they finish their work, developers, then onwards, your work starts. DevOps engineers work starts. So that means there is a proper demarcation between your job and developer's job. Okay. So that's why I mentioned very, very clearly here that you need not to have any programming language background. Understood? That's right. So you need not, because developers are there, they will take care of that code, everything. You, you need not to worry. Your job is after they store the coding kit, then you are going to connect to Jenkins, then Maven, then you build. That's what you are going to do. So that's why in every DevOps team, there will be developers will be there. Developers will be there. Okay, they are also part of DevOps team. And one more exception is Selenium. If you want to Selenium, if you want to learn Selenium, you must know Java first. You must know Java. <clears throat> That's why testing is also one more exception because testers also will be there in companies. So one more exception, tester. That's it. In DevOps team, there will be a DevOps engineer, there will be a developer, there will be a tester. Now you might be thinking, why are we calling that one as a DevOps team? Because see, developer is doing one task, development. 
tester is doing one task testing but devops engineer you are going to build you are going to check the quality you are going to deploy you are going to monitor and you are going to manage all these tools so you are going to play a major okay that's why we call that team as a devops team so remember in every project a team consists of mainly three things three guys devops engineers developers and testers enough got it more than enough got it they can do everything by themselves that is so actually it works got it so here i told you right you need to be perfect in one or two tools but here we are going to learn all these tools in depth man i'll teach all these tools in a in depth man okay master level okay you might be having one more doubt so i that's fine we are going to learn all these tools that is absolutely fine but where comes linux see guys all these tools we are going to install on top of linux because majority of these tools they support linux some tools they support windows also those will see in windows but most of the tools they support linux that's why before you touch devops you must know linux then where comes aws for that we need many linux servers right we need many linux servers in those you are going to install devops tools from where you are going to launch those linux servers from aws cloud okay so aws cloud would be our underlying platform from that we are going to launch linux servers in those we are going to install devops tools and we are going to work so that's why first we are going to run aws then linux then only devops i hope you understood the you know dependence in interview sort of they are asking questions in the same manner in real time also we work in the same manner see here devops we are going to learn in a master level master level linux also we are going to learn in administration level but aws we can't cover each and everything because see we are going to cover aws which is required to learn devops that is what we are going to cover suppose no say I, i want to learn complete aws and i would like to go with aws certification so i want to learn at a certification level i want to crack all three certifications whatever you are having if that is your aim then you need to join aws course separately because here that's of again two months they i take separate aws batch okay so that is of again two months okay but say okay i am good with the devops engineer then that's fine what or aws which is required to learn devops that i am going to teach here itself and that is more than enough for devops that is more than enough okay got it so that is how it is going to be okay and one more thing one more thing guys uh, as i said here you are not going to use any programming languages you are not going to use any programming languages that's what i said but you are going to use scripting language scripting then you might be having out say then what is the difference between programming language and scripting language so you tell me guys anyone what is the difference between programming and scripting language anyone any idea thing language maybe it is pre decided the scripts are already there we just need to use it mm -hmm. programming developer we develop in our own way and new uh, you know new lang i mean the languages are used in new words this is my understanding between them okay good any anyone else any any idea from anyone okay let me explain no problem i'll i'll explain i'll explain in a simple terms without going into much technicalities at this stage let me put it in a simple terms as or whatever someone said that's right see programming language developers they use programming language developers devops team you are going to use scripting language developers they use programming language devops team you are going to use scripting language so we use programming language to develop any application to create any application see here developers they are using programming language to create ircrtc application to create any application you use programming language then why are you learning scripting language for automation purpose if you want to do any task automatically for that we use scripting language let me tell you see after product is ready being a devops engineer you are going to deploy that product in thousands of servers railway servers that i said you need to deploy in thousands of servers so you deployed in first server second server third server you do it manually how much time it takes 
So I want automation here. In one go, I want to deploy that one in all servers. So here I want to automate this task. For that, we use scripting language. So simple. Programming language, we use to develop any application. Scripting language, we use to automate tasks. Got it? For that, we use scripting language. So being a DevOps guy, see, you are going to use Ansible for deployment. In Ansible, yes, we are going to learn one scripting language. That is YAML. YAML. Okay, YAML is one of the scripting languages that we are going to use in Ansible for deployment purpose, that to automation. We use YAML only. You can search in Google. Don't think that I shall stay the Python and all. No, we don't use. We use YAML only. You search in Google if you want. I'm not against Python. I teach Python also. But here we are not using means not using. As simple as that. Okay. And you learn one scripting language, you can understand all other scripting languages. The scripting languages are very easy, unlike programming languages. Scripting languages are kind of plain text. If you see automatically, you'll understand what is there. Okay. It's kind of driving one bike. If you know how to drive one bike, you can drive all other bikes. Okay. That is what scripting language. That anyways, I'm going to explain from the scratch, from zero level. You need not to worry. Got it? So this is all about DevOps. And one more thing, guys, these DevOps introduced by a company called Facebook. Facebook. So they launched this one uh, under the name of Dark Launch. They launched these DevOps under the name of Dark Launch. They kept it secret for so many years. Later on, every company came to know, everyone, every company started using DevOps. So secret of success for Facebook is DevOps. Got it? Okay. So I hope you understood that is what? DevOps. Let me walk you through these slides which I'm having. You understood the kind of package that you can get. And uh, yeah. See here, this is a, a definition of DevOps. And you can see development team and operations team. I need to keep my image. <laughs> okay, anyways, you can understand it. Development team, operations team. These are the stages. Now we are combining development team plus operations. From that, we are forming DevOps. Okay, so we have only one team called DevOps. That is all. Now, see here, we are establishing communication, collaboration, and automation between these two things, development and operations. So in this course, we are going to learn all these tools. As I said, first we are going to cover AWS, then Linux, then Git, then Ansible, Apache Web Server, Tomcat, Application Server, Jenkins, Docker, Kubernetes, Maven, CloudWatch, SNS, Simple Notification Service, and VirtualBox. So in this course, we are going to cover all these tools that to in a master level. I told you that. I can promise you that after this course, you can start teaching. That I can promise you. Okay. Fine. Now here, there is one exception. That is Kubernetes. Kubernetes is a new tool in the market. New tool. Okay. It's a new tool in the market. Since it is new, it is new for everyone, right? correct? I'm also learning, my manager is learning, everyone is learning. And also we don't have much knowledge source for this. And on top of that, it is a vast tool, major. If you want to be perfect in Kubernetes, it itself takes two months of time. And in companies nowadays, they are not expecting in-depth knowledge because it's a new tool. They are asking questions only theory and installation part only, as often. So that's why here we are going to discuss theory and installation. That itself is a big thing. That only we are going to cover because we have that much knowledge as of now. Maybe in future we can add some more content. Got it? Apart from that, we'll discuss all other tools in an in-depth manner, master level. Okay. Yeah. So these are the images of those tools. Uh, let me walk you through this course content which I'm having. Guys, these are course content. Uh, this I'm going to share with you. You just go through this course content because you must know before you join the class, you must know what we are going to cover. Okay. See, I'll tell you how we are going to cover it. This is AWS, this is Linux, this is DevOps, assume. AWS, Linux, DevOps. So what we do, first we'll cover a little bit of AWS. Then after that, we'll cover a little bit of Linux. Then we'll start DevOps. When we start DevOps, then immediate, then after, in while discussing DevOps, we are going to cover remaining part of AWS and DevOps. So first we are going to cover little bit of AWS and Linux so that we can start our DevOps. While discussing DevOps in every tool, we use AWS and Linux. 
That's why we are going to cover as per the dependency of what it that is. So you can go through this course content first DevOps introduction, then AWS introduction, then Unix and Linux and all commands we are going to cover. You can see vast syllabus is there, guys, master level that I can promise you. Git, vast one more major two, and Docker also major two. Ansible, one more major two. Then Maven, these are comparatively smaller tools. Maven, CloudWatch, and you know, SNS, simple notification. And Jenkins, one more major tool again. And Kubernetes. Tomcat. Tomcat is both application server and web server. The actual difference I'll explain in class. Apache web server. VirtualBox, a pretty small tool. And we are going to cover two projects, two real-time live projects. Quality tool, check style and all that we are going to include in projects. Okay. So two real-time live projects. Those are kind of CI, CD pipeline projects. Okay. You might have heard continuous integration, continuous delivery or deploy pipeline projects. Those are going to be two real-time live major products. We are going to share this course content. You can go through slowly. Okay. Yeah. Uh, guys, this is very, very important slide. Just give me 10 more minutes. I'll finish this slide. Then I'll come to all your doubts. Okay. This is the most important slide. Okay. Just how patience. 10 more minutes. Then I'll come to all your doubts. Class duration is going to be two months. Generally, we, I say two months, but it takes more than two months for sure. Two months, 10 days minimum. Okay, two months, one week to 10 days minimum. Generally, for saying we say two months, but it takes more than two months, two months, 10 days. Every day, class time should be 9.30 to 10.30 p.m. Okay. Weekends, we don't have any classes because you have to practice also. Okay, but sometimes I do take classes on weekends also. Sometimes that I'll let you know well in advance. See guys, it's not about exactly number of days, number of hours. No, that is not the case. Focus is not on the one. Focus is finishing the course content. I don't count these days. Okay, so here it's all about finishing the course content. I follow the my way, finishing the, the sequence of you know I have a list of topics. I follow in that way. Okay, so if it is if it takes more time, I will take more time. Got it? That's why don't think that exactly those days, those many hours. No, it's all about finishing the course content. That is a focus. Okay. So I'll give theoretical knowledge, practical. In every topic, first I'll explain theory, then practical. Without theory, you can't understand practical. Without practical, there is no meaning for the theory. So in-depth theory to crack interviews, in-depth practical to work in real time. So combination is very, very important. In fact, more practical oriented. Okay. Every day you'll get recorded video. I know uh, along with the PDF, soft copy of material. Uh, I know some of you are working. Sometimes for you, it may not be possible to attend classes due to health issues, due to rotational issues. That's why don't worry, guys. We record every class. And after every class, you get recorded video. Okay, along with PDF or material. Okay, along with. So in DevOps, yes, after every class, there is a PDF document for every class. Okay. And uh, demo videos and this demo video also we are recording that will be shared. And course syllabus also we are going to share with you. Okay. And one more thing is being a recruiter, I know how important this particular section is. This is the most important section. You know, when we take interviews, we won't ask questions. Hey, what is this? What is that? No. We won't ask these kind of questions. Interview starts with mainly four things. Majorly four things. The first one, we look at your resume, whether you prepared properly or not. That's the first thing. Second thing we ask, hey, what is your project? How you are handling the project? That's what we are going to ask. Third one, what you are doing every day? What are your day-to-day -day scenarios? You know, every day what you are doing, day-to-day -day tasks. The fourth one, what are the challenges that you faced? How did you troubleshoot? What are the problems that you faced? How are you addressing those things? So interview starts with these four things. Okay. If you're not good at these four, then you can't get a job. If you're good at these four, that's it. Done with the job. You can crack any number of interviews. See, knowledge you can get from anywhere. YouTube, Google, so many things are there. But from where you will get these things? These are very, very important. Unfortunately, many faculties from many institutions, they fail to explain these things. But you have special focus on these things. Okay, special focus on these things. So here, I will explain how to prepare resume at the end of course. 
Okay, I'll explain how to prepare it for fresh years, for IT, non-IT, non-IT. Even you have ten years of gap also. Don't worry, I'll tell you how to fill the gap. I told you it right, for that required documents, everything I'll tell you from where you get. And non-IT guys, don't worry, you will compete with genuine candidates. In real time, we use mostly two to three tools. But here you are learning many tools, and you are going with all real time scenarios. You can perform better than those guys. See, someone is having four years of experience of driving bike. You are learning that bike within two two and a half months. In fact, you are learning some more skills. Someone is having four years experience or ten years. It doesn't mean that he will use that bike to fly. Bike remains bike only, right? At the end of day, that's all. So you can perform better than those guys. Trust me. So I'll explain resume preparation. by having one to one discussion at the end of course because i know you are from different profiles different backgrounds so i need to talk to you based on that i will explain how to prepare resume okay and i'll validate your resume also so you prepare resumes okay then you share those things to me i'll validate whether you prepared properly or not in fact i'm going to share some sample cvs and all to you okay you can edit you can put them. okay two real time live projects two okay CI/CD pipeline kind of projects. Two, these are the biggest real-time live projects in which I worked on. Those are the projects. So if you are good at these projects, you can handle any number of projects single-handedly, and you can keep these resumes, these projects in your CVs. You might be thinking, "Sir, if every one of us we keep same project, then it's a problem." No. From this, I'll tell you how can you convert into your own project, so that everyone's CV will be kind of you know different kind of project. From this, we can do any number of projects. Got it? And also, I'll explain. I'll give big lengthy list of day to day tasks at the end of course. Tool by tool, I'll give big lengthy list of day to day tasks. And also, one more list. What kind of errors we get and how to troubleshoot? What are errors I faced in my entire career? Me and my friends, my colleagues. I have noted down all those errors, and I'll give big lengthy list and how to troubleshoot. Got it? And also, I'll explain how to deal with client calls. Every day we attend client calls. How we deal, and also real time scenarios. What are the real time scenarios that we face every day? And interview tracking tips. Some tips from my side being a recruiter, and interview and exam questions. Guys, here I'll be sharing a PDF document for every tool. What questions we share at the end of course? I'll share interview questions PDF. Exam questions. See, sometimes in company we conduct internal exams. So how we conduct that also I'm going to explain. Don't worry. And how the environment, working environment, would be how actually it works, especially non-IT guys, okay, and job assistant. Since I'm a recruiter, whenever we conduct any drive in my company, I refer my students only, okay, my students only. So job support will be there, got it. And guys, any educational qualification, you could be from BA, BSc, BCom, okay, MCA, MSc, civil engineer, chemical engineer, mechanical engineer, okay, any qualification, guys. IT is for everyone. IT is for everyone. In fact, non-IT students are doing good in IT. Trust me. Okay, so anyone can come to IT. No problem at all. Okay, don't worry about your educational qualifications and don't worry about your percentages. We don't bother about those things in IT. Remember that. Okay. And to practice, you need one basic laptop. Just basic laptop. You don't need a higher configuration kind of. Okay, one GB RAM is also more than enough. You can ask your doubts in English, Hindi, and Telugu. आप हिंदी में भी डाउट्स पूछ सकते हो मुझसे मेरे तेलुगु लोगों को डाउट आने वाला है आई एम गुड एट ऑल थ्री लैंग्वेज फील फ्री टू आस्क एनी क्वेश्चन इन एनी ऑफ दिस लैंग्वेज ओके फील कंफर्टेबल डोंट वरी अबाउट लैंग्वेज लैंग्वेज शुड नॉट बी बैरी गॉट इट आई विल एक्सप्लेन एवरीथिंग फ्रॉम जीरो लेवल सी आई नो दैट मोस्ट ऑफ यू आर फ्रॉम नॉन आईटी बिकॉज़ इन एवरी क्लास ऑफ माइंड हाफ ऑफ द स्ट्रेंथ आई गेट फ्रॉम नॉन आईटी ओनली ओके आई नो यू आर हियर डोंट वरी सो बिफोर आई स्टार्ट एनी टॉपिक आई अज्यूम यू डोंट नो एनीथिंग by keeping that assumption in my mind i'll explain everything from zero level scratch ground level got it my laptop is an empty box i don't have anything in my laptop each and every download installation everything i do in front of you if i'm not getting any errors you don't get any errors still if you are getting errors i'll take remote session i'll address all those issues because in devops yes we have to install those tools okay if you get any errors i'll be taking remote session and i'll be addressing all those issues okay You know, right here I teach AWS as a separate course, DevOps as separate, and Python as separate course. Apart from that, I'm having good hands-on experience in these technologies also: Hadoop, VMware, Shell Script, Linux, Redis, Volume Manager, and Cluster. 
So if you get any doubts from any of these technologies, feel free to ask me. I'll be happy to clarify all your doubts. Okay. My explanation would be in a simple English without using any complex words and all. Okay. So that everyone can understand easily. First two, three sessions are free. Today's session. See, for you tomorrow and after tomorrow, we don't have classes because tomorrow and after tomorrow also, I'm going to conduct demo classes. The so same repeated, repetitive classes. Okay. For some new joiners. So for you, next class would be on Monday. Monday. Okay. So Monday, not demo. Monday is our regular class where I'm going to show practical sessions also. So today, Monday, Tuesday. Today, Monday, Tuesday, these are free sessions. So Monday, Tuesday, class link I'm going to share with you to your mobile messages. So feel free to attend guys. Those are also important classes. Then you can decide whether join or not. That is up to you. Okay. Uh, we'll provide course completion certificate. See, this is not DevOps certificate. See, AWS certificates are there because AWS company is there. VMware certificates are there because VMware company is there. Red Hat certifications are there because Red Hat company is there. But we don't have any DevOps company. DevOps is a group of tools. Each tool belongs to each company and that company is providing two to three certifications for every tool. So if you take 10 tools, 10 into three certifications, 30 certifications. How many certifications you do? That's impossible, right? And we don't have any one common DevOps certification because we don't have such kind of company. Okay, got it? So that's why we don't have any DevOps certification. If someone is saying, hey, we'll provide DevOps certification, that's a fake. Remember that. Here we provide course completion certificate. That means successfully have finished your course at SIDEME. That certificate we are going to provide with proper seal, stamp, and signature and all. I'm a certified trainer. This is a government registered institution. So we provide digital certificate that you can showcase anywhere. You'll be given priority. Okay. Because we are having type with many companies. You can pay the fee in installments, guys. I know people are facing economical issues due to pandemic and all. Uh, so you can pay the fee in installments, no problem at all. So what is the fee? How many installments? You contact admin team. You can see these are admin number. You contact admin team. They will explain better. Okay. Anyways, first three are free. First attend free session, then you can decide. Okay. Uh, my promise to you as a faculty team is I'll do complete justice to the fee whatever you are paying. Okay. I, I'll give more than the worth knowledge compared to the fee you are paying. Your hard and money will not go in vain. Trust me. I'll do complete justice. That's my promise as a faculty. Silly doubts are better than silly mistakes. If you get any doubts, feel free to ask me guys. But don't keep any doubt with you. Because if you do mistakes in company, they will laugh at you. But here, no one is going to laugh at you, right? Feel free to ask any question in any manner. Just get your doubt clarified. That is important. So for any queries, contact admin team. These are number. Okay. Uh, when you contact them, don't mind if you are not getting quick re response. Because we are working from home actually due to pandemic. We are maintaining limited strength. Uh, that's why they will be dealing with many students. That's why when you just make a call or send a WhatsApp message, they will come back to you when they are free. They'll come back to you. So if you are not getting response quickly, please don't mind and you know, uh, don't worry. Okay, they will come back to you. That is for sure. But that's my request. Okay. Fine, guys. That's it. That's all about my demo class. Uh, yeah, hope to see you all in Monday's class. Same time, the link we are going to share with you. And this recorded video, we are going to share to you guys. This recorded video, uh, the mails that you use it to register this Zoom account. While joining, you might have given your email address, right? We are going to share this recorded video along with documents and all to that email. So when we share, anyways, you'll get notification. Even if you did not get, no problem. Just go to your Google Drive, that mails, Google Drive, whatever mail you have been. There you can find one option left side, share it with me, share it with me. When you click that, you can see that video and the document. Okay. By mistake, if you have given any wrong emails, just contact admin team, get your mail verified so that without any interruption, you will continue to receive recording videos. Got it? Okay. So, yeah, that is all about, uh, from my side, that is all about DevOps. Thank you so much, guys. Hope to see you again all in Monday's class. Same time, link I'm going to share with you. Got it? Fine. Now, uh, those who don't have any doubts, you can leave the session. Those who are having doubts, please stay back. Now I'll clarify all your doubts. Okay? Yeah.
just want to end. Yeah.